वेलकम बैक एवरीवन इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी स्टडी अबाउट द सिंथेसिस ऑफ प्रोस्टाग्लैंडिन इन द बॉडी हाउ द प्रोस्टाग्लैंडिन इज मेड एंड वेयर दे एक्ट वी स्टडीड अबाउट द प्रोस्टेनोइड रिसेप्टर्स सो टेकिंग द नेक्स्ट स्टेप टुडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द एक्शंस एंड पैथोफिजियोलॉजिकल रोल्स ऑफ प्रोस्टाग्लैंडिन इन द बॉडी कीपिंग इट वेरी सिंपल एंड इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड सो लेट्स डाइव इन Okay so let's start first of all we will study the effect of prostaglandins on cardiovascular system we will start with prostaglandin E2 prostaglandin E2 promotes the vasodilation primary, uh, primarily by relaxing the vascular smooth muscles it also has inotropic effect that is it enhances the cardiac contractility and it also regulates the renal blood flow this is the action of prostaglandin E2 what is the role in the body its role is in inflammation and fever prostaglandin E2 contributes to inflammatory response and can lead to vasodilation and increased vascular permeability and pain so when the permeability of the blood vessels increases during the inflammation it facilitates the movement of the immune cells and proteins and other substances from the blood stream to the affected tissues so prostaglandin E2 causes the vasodilation and will increase the permeability of the blood vessels during the inflammation also prostaglandin E2 is involved in the induction of the fever by acting on the hypothalamus so it was prostaglandin E2 prostacyclin is also a vasodilator it is a potent vasodilator particularly in the pulmonary circulation in main function is to inhibit the platelet aggregation so it also contract the effect of thromboxane E2 these both are opposite they work opposite to each other prostacyclin is a potent vasodilator and inhibits the platelet aggregation so it has a atheroprotective action prostacyclin has a protective role in the development of atherosclerosis by inhibiting the platelet aggregation and promoting the vasodilation on the other hand thromboxin a2 is a potent vasoconstrictor and it induces the platelet aggregation and promotes the clot formation so what is its role thromboxin a2 contributes to thrombus formation making it a key player in the cardiovascular events like mi myocardial infarction also if there is excessive thromboxin a2 activity it may lead to hypertension now prostacyclin and thromboxane they work in balance to maintain the vascular hemostasis what is vascular hemostasis vascular hemostasis is the body's way of maintaining the blood vessels integrity preventing the excessive bleeding or clotting it involves a delicate balance between the pro clotting and the anti clotting factors this thromboxane is produced by the platelets and prostacyclin produced by the vascular endothelium these both work together in a mutually antagonistic system so when there is normal circulation in the body the prostacyclins prevent the aggregation of the platelets and when there is injury and need of plugging in thrombosis then the thromboxane will induce the platelet aggregation so in short the endothelium produces prostacyclin to oppose the vasoconstrictive and prothrombotic actions of the thromboxane now the conditions like atherosclerosis even favors this imbalance what is atherosclerosis is it is a condition where these arteries they narrow and harden due to accumulation of the plague this plague is composed of the fats cholesterol and other substances on the arterial wall and it will slow down the blood flow so the imbalance if the thromboxin is more and prostacyclin is less these conditions like atherosclerosis even favors the imbalance and this imbalance contributes to progression of the atherosclerosis and reduced blood flow coupled with increased risk of the clot formation and if there is clot formation then the blood flow blood supply will stop and it can lead to the severe complications like heart attacks and strokes as the vital organs may not receive the adequate blood supply so a delicate equilibrium between the thromboxane and prostacyclin is crucial in maintaining the vascular health now we will study about the effect of prostaglandins on the uterus first of all pg e2 and f2 alpha they contract the uterus 
the main function is to contract the uterus and these are essential during the labor and the childbirth so pg e2 and f2 alpha induces the contraction of the uterine smooth muscles these are essential during the labor and childbirth in the non pregnant uterus it decreases the frequency and amplitude of contractions so the main role is in initiation of labor and postpartum uterine involution so elevated levels of pg f2 alpha and pg e2 contributes to the onset of the labor by promoting the cervical ripening and uterine contractions so they bring those rhythmic contractions during the childbirth after the child is born the contraction they help in contraction of the uterus minimizing the blood flow they minimize the bleeding after the childbirth and facilitates the return of the uterus to its non pregnant state or facilitates the return of the uterus to its original size now prostacycline these are the vasodilator and inhibits the platelet aggregation they promotes the vasodilation and contributes to the increased blood flow in contrast to the uterus they increases the blood supply to the uterus they are helpful in the menstrual cycle regulation and the pregnancy maintenance also because during the pregnancy they increases they causes the dilation of the blood vessels ensuring an adequate blood supply to the developing placenta and the fetus supporting the blood flow to the developing fetus this vascular support is crucial for a sustaining a healthy pregnancy by providing the oxygen and nutrients to the growing embryo and in the menstrual cycle regulation they regulate the blood flow during the menstrual cycling and contract the uh, contracting the vasoconstrictive effect of the eicosanoids so they increases the blood supply to the uterus during the menstrual cycle prostacyclines help to regulate the blood flow to the uterus which is crucial for preparation of the endometrium now the thromboxane a2 it is a potent vasoconstrictor and it decreases the blood supply to the uterus so as the endometrial lining breaks and blood flow uh, starts when the endometrium lining breaks down and is shedding during the menstruation the blood vessels are exposed and the blood flow starts the thromboxane constrictive effects help to minimize the bleeding by narrowing these blood vessels and reducing the overall blood flow to the uterus so prostaglandins e2 and f2 alpha induces the uterine contractions and prostacyclin opposes these effects by promoting the vasodilation and inhibiting the platelet aggregation so a delicate balance between these eicosanoids is essential for the normal uterine function during the various reproductive processes imbalance in the prostaglandin and prostacyclin levels may contribute to the complications during the pregnancy such as preterm labor or preeclampsia so imbalance with over uh, production of the pg e2 and pg f2 alpha can lead to the excessive uterine contractions and potentially causing the preterm labor or the complications during the labor if there is reduced levels of the prostacyclin it can result in reduced vasodilation and increased platelet aggregation this may contribute to inadequate blood supply to the placenta affecting the fetal development and potentially leading to the complications like preeclampsia preeclampsia is increased blood pressure during the pregnancy now we will study the effect of prostaglandins on the bronchial muscles on the airways so the prostaglandin d2 f2 alpha and thromboxane a2 they are potent vasoconstrictor they obstruct the airways in asthma allergic conditions increased production of prostaglandins like f2 alpha d2 and thromboxane a2 they contributes to the clinical signals of wheezing wheezing is the whistle type sound produced during the breathing they result in shortness of breath that is difficulty in breathing patient may feel that is, uh, enough air is not available they are not getting the enough air and the due to the, this is due to the airway obstruction airway obstruction is there due to these prostaglandins t2 f12 fine thrombosin a2 on the opposite side prostaglandin e2 and prostaglandin i2 they are pro powerful bronchodilators okay so d2 and a uh, thromboxane a2 contributes to inflammation and bronchoconstriction this t2 is released 
during the allergic reaction and promotes the smooth muscle contraction in the bronchi contributes to the airway of constriction and thromboxane a2 is synthesized by the platelets involved in the platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction and it further intensifies the bronchoconstriction on the other hand prostaglandin e2 and i2 they have bronchodilatory and vasodilatory effects prostaglandin e2 inhibits this smooth muscle contraction in the bronchi and promotes the airway dilation prostacyclin that is prostaglandin i2 produced by the endothelial cells induces the vasodilation and it inhibits the platelet aggregation it opposes the prostacyclin opposes the vasoconstrictive effects of the thromboxane a2 now we will study the effect of prostaglandins on git prostaglandins are protective for the git prostaglandin e2 and prostaglandin i2 they are they protect the gastric mucosa they maintain the blood flow of the gastric mucosa and they regulate the gastric acid secretion they inhibits the gastric acid secretion by the parietal cells so they have gastric mucosal protection effect by stimulating the mucus and bicarbonate secretion they promotes the mucus secretion and bicarbonate secretion they maintains the blood flow to the gastric mucosa they promotes the vasodilation and they ensures that the gastric mucosa gets the adequate blood flow the blood supply then they regulate the gastric acid secretion by inhibiting the gastric acid secretion by the parietal cells so they regulate the acid gastric acidity now when the production of these prostaglandins it is inhibited by taking the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like aspirin ibuprofen etc so nsaids inhibit the production of prostaglandins and can lead to gastric mucosal damage and development of ulcer due to reduction in the mucus and the bicarbonate secretion also the blood supply to the gastric mucosa will be reduced it may contribute to ischemia or ulcer formation and the reduction in prostaglandin levels increases the gastric acid secretion and it may contribute to the peptic ulcers so when we take the drugs like ibuprofen for the very long time when we take any of the nsaids for very long time it leads to the ulcer formations generally due to inhibition of the product uh, inhibition of the prostaglandin synthesis prostaglandins play a protective role in the gastrointestinal tract by promoting the mucus and bicarbonate secretion maintaining the adequate blood supply to the mucosa and regulating the integrity of the stomach lining nsaids including the drugs like ibuprofen and aspirin inhibit the enzyme cox cox is involved in the prostaglandin synthesis and this inhibition reduces the production of protective prostaglandins in the stomach lining nsaids can also stimulate the gastric acid secretion contributing to imbalance between the acid production and the protective mechanisms so combination of the factors like uh, reduced protective factors reduced mucus and bicarbonate and increased harmful fa harmful factors like gastric acids it results in the formation of the gastric ulcers so the patients taking nsaids especially at the high doses or for the long term they are at increased risk of developing the gastrointestinal complications so they must also take the medications that protect the stomach lining like proton pump inhibitors omeprazole rabeprazole and other antacids like ranitidine etc so prostaglandin e2 and i2 effect of prostaglandins on the kidney first of all they have they causes the vasodilation of the renal arteries so prostaglandin e2 and i2 promotes the vasodilation of the blood vessels in the kidney this help to increase the blood flow to the kidney ensuring the optimal perfusion for filtration and maintaining renal function these prostaglandins also contributes to the regulation of renal blood flow by dilating the efferent arterioles they dilate the efferent arterioles efferent arterioles are the blood vessels that bring blood to the kidney next is they have diuretic effect they increases the sodium and potassium excretion they inhibit the tubular reabsorption of water and electrolytes so their effect is similar to that of the furosemide prostaglandin e2 has furosemide like inhibitory effect on the chloride reabsorption in the renal tubules contributes to the increase 
excretion of the chloride ions also they also inhibit the prostaglandin e2 antagonizes the antidiuretic hormone that is vasopressin so this vasopressin or the adh normally act on the kidney to increase the water reabsorption and reducing the urine output by inhibiting this antidiuretic hormone prostaglandin e2 further promotes the water excretion and contributes to it diuretic effect on the other hand thromboxin a2 thromboxin a2 has a vasoconstrictive effect it can constrict the blood vessels including the renal blood vessels so thromboxin vasoconstrictive effect play a role in regulating the renal blood flow and glomerular filtrate regulation of the fluids and electrolyte balance particularly in the situations where conservation of sodium is necessary so the balance between these prostaglandins is important for maintaining the proper renal perfusion and function and disruption or break in this balance can have implications for the blood pressure regulation and overall kidney health so for example the person or the patients taking the medications that inhibit the synthesis of the prostaglandins like nsaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs may impact the renal function by reducing the vasodilatory effect of the prostaglandin e2 and i2 now prostaglandin e2 and i2 play some important roles in cns may, their main role is in the fever induction and pain sensitization they also they both also have vasodilatory effect so the during the immune response inflammatory signals stimulate the production of prostaglandin e2 prostaglandin e2 then acts on the hypothalamus hypothalamus is the part of brain responsible for regulating the body's temperature so it induces prostaglandin e2 induces a change in the set point for the body temperature and will lead to the fever the body responds by raising its temperature to create the environment that is less favorable for the invading pathogens next is the pain sensitization prostaglandin e2 it sensitizes the pain receptors so if there is any tissue damage or inflammation increased prostaglandin e2 enhances the sensitivity of these receptors and make them more responsive to the painful stimuli this increased sensitivity contributes to perception of pain associated with the inflammatory conditions prostaglandin e2 and prostaglandin i2 they both have vasodilatory effects in the cns they contributes to the dilation of the blood vessels and promoting the increased blood flow maintain the optimal perfusion to support the neural, neural functions so the role is regulating the cerebral blood flow ensuring the adequate oxygen and nutrients supply to the brain during the inflammation elevated prostaglandin e2 produces or results in the fever and during the inflammatory conditions increased prostaglandin e2 will increase the sensitivity to the pain so prostaglandins have various effect on the peripheral nerves including the pain sensitization inflammatory responses and neurotransmitter release so prostaglandin e2 particularly it sensitizes the pain receptors pain nerves to the painful stimuli this increased sensitization contributes to the development of the inflammatory pain where even very small stimuli can evoke the pain responses next is the inflammatory responses prostaglandin e2 and d2 are the potent mediator of the inflammation inflammation is the protective response to the injury or the infection so what happens when there is any injury or the infection prostaglandin e2 it uh, induces the vasodilation and increases the permeability of the blood vessels this increased permeability facilitates the movement of immune cells and proteins to the site of injury and promotes promoting the inflammatory responses this movement of the immune cells at the site of injury is the body's defense mechanism by bringing uh, by uh, bringing these immune cells to the affected area to eliminate the pathogens and the damaged cells so e2 and d2 have role in the inflammation 
However, excessive inflammation can contribute to the nerve damage and the chronic pain. Next is the neurotransmitter release. Can, prostaglandins can also modulate the release of the neurotransmitters and dysregulation of this modulation could contribute to abnormal nerve signaling and the pain conditions. So uh, this prostaglandin can modulate the release of the neurotransmitters in the peripheral nerves. They may influence the release of the substance such as substance P, which play a role in transmitting the pain signals. The modulation of the neurotransmitter release contributes to the communication between the nerves and can impact the pain perception of the pain. Prostaglandins have several effects on the eyes, particularly in regulation of intraocular pressure, ocular inflammation, and pupillary constriction or meiosis. So prostaglandin analogs such as latanoprost and bimetoprost, they are used in the medications to lower the intraocular pressure in the conditions like glaucoma. These analogs work by increasing the outflow of the aqueous humor. So this is the aqueous humor and this is the drainage system. If this drainage canal is blocked, trabecular meshwork, if this drainage canal is blocked, then the fluid accumulates here, build up of fluid, and this will create pressure inside. So increased pressure can damage the blood vessels and the optic nerves. So prostaglandins play a role in the process by relaxing the muscles of the muscles in the eye's drainage system. That is the trabecular meshwork. So prostaglandins will relax the trabecular meshwork and allow the improved fluid drainage. And consequently, it will reduce the intraocular pressure. So physio pathophysiological role is by enhancing this uveous sacral outflow, prostaglandin analogs reduces the resistance to the aqueous humor drainage. It will improve the drainage of the aqueous humor and decrease the intraocular pressure. This mechanism is particularly beneficial in glaucoma. In glaucoma, increased intraocular pressure is a major risk factor for optic nerve damage and the visual field loss. Next is ocular inflammation. Prostaglandins are involved in the modulation of inflammatory responses in the eyes. Prostaglandins, especially prostaglandin E2, is the mediator of inflammation in the eyes. During inflammatory responses, injured or the activated immune cells, they release erectonic acid from the cell membrane and form the prostaglandins. And these prostaglandins cause the vasodilation and increases the permeability of the blood vessels. And due to increased permeability in the blood vessels, the immune cells migrate from the blood vessels to the site of injury or the infection. And they will kill the pathogens there then and uh, damaged cells also. Next is the contraction of the iris muscles, meiosis or the pupil contraction. Prostaglandins, particularly prostaglandin F2 alpha, can contribute to the meiosis by causing contraction of the muscles in the iris. So this leads to the pupillary constriction. Prostaglandin analog analogs used in the glaucoma treatment. This latanoprost and bimetoprost, the prostaglandins uh, analogs used in the glaucoma treatment may also induce the meiosis as a side effect. Pathophysiological role, meiosis can occur in the response to the inflammation, injury or surgery. Prostaglandins may contribute to this process by modulating the tone of the iris sphincter muscles. Okay, so prostaglandins contribute to meiosis by causing contractions of the muscles in the iris. Prostaglandins influence the endocrine system in various ways, particularly in the regulation of hormonal secretion and responses. So here are some key effects. First is the regulation of hormone secretion. Prostaglandins can will regulate the secretion of hormones from the endocrine glands and this dysregulation may contribute to hormonal imbalance impacting the various physiological processes such as metabolism, growth and reproductive functions. So first is the influence on the reproductive system. Prostaglandins play a crucial role in female reproductive system by regulating the secretion of hormones that are involved in the menstruation, ovulation and pregnancy. Dysregulation of the hormones or distribution of the prostaglandins in the reproductive system can contribute to the conditions such as dysmenorrhea and infertility. So in the female reproductive system, prostaglandins are involved in process of ovulation helping to 
in uh, trigger the release of hormones such as luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone also the prostaglandins particularly in reproductive system play an important role in menstrual cycle they contribute to uterine contractions and shedding of the endometrial lining during the menstruation and dysregulation of the prostaglandins will result in dysmenorrhea and infertility then the impact on the thyroid functions prostaglandin to modulate the thyroid hormone synthesis and release also and dysregulation may contribute to the thy thyroid dysfunction affecting the metabolic rate and energy imbalance next is the interaction with the adrenal hormones so prostaglandin may influence the secretion of adrenal hormones such as cortisol and aldosterone so during the inflammatory responses prostaglandins can interact with the stress hormones such as cortisol and the dysregulation may impact the stress responses fluid electrolyte balance and the immune functions next is the feedback mechanism in hormone regulation prostaglandins may participate in feedback mechanism that regulate the hormone production and dysfunction of this feedback loop involving the prostaglandins may contribute to endocrine disorders characterized by the hormone imbalances impact on the insulin secretion prostaglandins influence the insulin secretion from the pancreas and dysregulation contributes to the insulin resistance or the abnormal glucose metabolism thank you all for tuning in today's video in our next video we will explore the clinical applications of prostaglandins and their analogs in the field like gynecology obstetrics erectile dysfunction gastric protection etc so if you found this information interesting make sure to stay connected by hitting that like button subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications your support means world to me until next video take care stay curious see you in the next video